Dad, what's wrong with the telly? Good evening, London. Allow me first to apologize for this the emergency channel. I do, like many of you, appreciate the comforts of the everyday routine, the security of the familiar, the tranquility, repetition. Bloody hell. I enjoy them as much as any bloke. But in the spirit of commemoration, whereby those important events of the past, usually associated with someone's death or the end of some awful bloody struggle, are celebrated with a nice holiday, I thought we could mark this November the 5th a day that is sadly no longer remembered by taking some time out of our daily lives to sit down and have a little chat. There are, of course, those who do not want us to speak. We think, just let me I think. Expect even now, orders are being shouted into telephones and men with guns will soon be on their way. It's chance of settler. Damn it! Why? Because while the truncheon may be used in lieu of conversation, words will always retain their power. Words offer the means to meaning, and for those who will listen, the enunciation of truth. And the truth is, there is something terribly wrong with this country, isn't there? You designed it, sir. You wanted it foolproof. You taught me every television in London. Cruelty and injustice, intolerance and oppression. And where once you had the freedom to object, to think and speak as you saw fit, you now have sensors and systems of surveillance coercing your conformity and subjecting your submission. We need cameras. How did this happen? Who's to blame? Well, certainly there are those who are more responsible than others, and they will be held accountable. But again, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need only look into a mirror. I know why you did it. I know you were afraid. Who wouldn't be? War, terror, disease. There were a myriad of problems which conspired to corrupt your reason and rob you of your common sense. Fear got the best of you, and in your panic, you turned to the now High Chancellor, Adam Suttler. He promised you order, he promised you peace, and all he demanded in return was your silent, obedient consent. Inspector, you're almost through. Last night, I sought to end that silence. Last night, I destroyed the Old Bailey to remind this country of what it has forgotten. More than 400 years ago, a great citizen wished to embed the 5th of November forever in our memory. His hope was to remind the world that fairness, justice, and freedom are more than words. They are perspectives. So if you've seen nothing, if the crimes of this government remain unknown to you, then I would suggest that you allow the 5th of November to pass unmarked. But if you see what I see, if you feel as I feel, and if you would seek as I seek, then I ask you to stand beside me. One year from tonight, outside the gates of Parliament, and together we shall give them a 5th of November that shall never, ever be forgotten. I can assure you, I mean you no harm. Who are you? Who? Who is but the form following the function of what, and what I am is a man in a mask. Well, I can see that. Of course you can. I'm not questioning your powers of observation. I'm merely remarking upon the paradox of asking a masked man who he is. Oh, right. But on this most auspicious of nights, permit me then, in lieu of the more commonplace sobriquet, to suggest the character of this dramatis persona. Voila! In view, a humble vaudevillian veteran, cast vicariously as both victim and villain by the vicissitudes of fate. This visage, no mere veneer of vanity, is a vestige of the Vox Populi, now vacant, vanished. However, this valorous visitation of a bygone vexation stands vivified and has vowed to vanquish these venal and virulent vermin, vanguarding vice and vouchsafing the violently vicious and voracious violation of volition. <laughs> as a votive not in vain for the value and veracity of such shall one day vindicate the vigilant and the virtuous <laughs> verily this vicious soise of verbiage veers most verbose so let me simply add that it's my very good honor to meet you and you may call me v are you like a crazy person i am quite sure they will say so but to whom might i ask am i speaking 
I'm Evie. Evie? Evie. Of course you are. What does that mean? It means that I, like God, do not play with dice and do not believe in coincidence. Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Thanks to you. Oh, I merely played my part. But tell me, do you enjoy music, Evie? I suppose. You see, I'm a musician of sorts and on my way to give a very special performance. What kind of musician? Percussion instruments are my speciality, but tonight I intend to call upon the entire orchestra for this particular event and would be most honored if you could join me. I don't think so. I think I should be getting home. I promise you it'll be like nothing you've ever seen, and afterwards you'll return home safely. All right. It's beautiful up here. A more perfect stage could not be asked for. I don't see any instruments. Your powers of observation will continue to serve you well. But wait! It is to Madame Justice that I dedicate this concerto in honor of the holiday she seems to have taken from these parts and in recognition of the imposter that stands in her stead. Tell me, do you know what day it is, Evie? Um, November the 4th. Not anymore. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgotten.